Hello, welcome back. Welcome back to me, actually. Welcome back to you, I guess, too. <laughs> if, if anybody's listening again. I'm home from good old crazy ass Texas. I don't know how long I've been home really because I'm just I'm just living these days, guys. Not much on the old agenda, so I'm barely keeping track of the days. I've been home for a while and uh, it's good to be home. I am done with the majority of what I needed to do this year. So, oh, anyway, I'd like to begin by dedicating this episode of me reading stuff to two specific people. And these people are, you guys ready for this? Todd and Jen of Arlington, Texas. Now, Todd and Jen know why, but all you guys, the rest of the listeners need to know is that Todd and Jen, they mean the world to me. And, uh, oh my God. And then Jen also gave me a coaster that I can't even tell you how obsessed I am with it. It's appropriately in my yarn room. Jen made me this coaster with a coffee mug on it. It's the sweetest thing ever. So anyway, this episode, I very rarely dedicate episodes to, uh, anybody, but this one goes out to Todd and Jen in Arlington, Texas. Um, Anyway, everybody else and Todd and Jen, how are you guys doing? Things here are pretty good. Actually, I don't know. I I mean, I think things are maybe great or excellent. Let's see. How are you guys doing? How are things in your life right now? Zero to ten. Ten being excellent. Zero being awful. It's okay. I've been at a zero many times. Not that long ago, I was at a zero. Right now, today... Monday, October the 3rd, I'm going with a 10. And I like reporting that to you guys. And and just so you know, so you can remember too, if you're at a zero or a one or a five, you never know. In a couple of days, it could be a 10. And then guess what? It'll be back down to a two the next day. You just know that's how life rolls. Um, anyway, I love my experience in Houston. Uh, you know, got, you guys, I have my show at Inman Gallery that is... Uh, Hell and the Paradisal is the name of the show. I've talked about it a lot, so I won't go on and on, but a lot of you guys came to the opening on that Saturday and the talk that Damien and I gave. I had so much fun. I saw some Me Reading Stuff t-shirts in the audience, Uh, actually one of which was on maybe the cutest person imaginable, Uh, and I think, yeah, so many people showed up to the talk Damien and I gave, so thank you. If any of you guys were someone who was there, uh, I always take it very seriously when people take any time out of their lives to come come to anything that I do. I can't even believe it. People seem to really like the work as well. Um, Oh, yeah. And this week I just found out that my show is an art forum critics pick this week. So or this month, I don't know what the cutoff is, but. Uh, I'll try to remember to link that. Let me write it. Let me write it down. Art forum. I'll link the review in the description of the podcast. Uh, and you can check that out. And also speaking of links, I'll go ahead and link also. Um, I think a lot of the work is available to view on, um, inmangallery.com. That's www.inman, I-N-M-A-N gallery.com. Uh, okay. I feel like I've talked about the business part of my life for now, almost four minutes. That's not, that's not cool. This, this podcast is about much more than that. You know that I know that. Um, let's see what, so let's move on to other stuff. Just life, life. Uh, Damien got me a new computer. That's right. That is right. New computer. So no more struggling to get this podcast recorded and uploaded and published. Uh, we should be good now. I have mentioned it in brief, but trust me, this thing was going to die. So uh, we walked into the Apple store after they were already closed, and we had no idea they were already closed, and we're just hanging out. We are even kind of flirting with each other against the wall. That's a whole other story. Damien and I were having so much fun, and neither of us are into technology at all. But for some reason, we were just living the life in this Apple store after hours. It was so weird. I don't remember what happened with the flirting against the wall, but that happened. And we're just hanging out. And and then eventually we're like, well, I guess we better go buy this thing. And so we slowly saunter up to one of the people. No one had asked us if we needed any help or even talked to us at all. And so 
we said, yeah, we were thinking about buying a computer. And, uh, or we, no, we said we are buying a computer. And they said, okay, well, we're closed. Uh, so <laughs> we were just like, what? And it was a long time past, like, um, an hour, whatever the hour was. Let's say they closed at nine. It was like 925 at this point or something. I did notice that it was empty. I mean, I did kind of notice that. And I was like, well, this is weird. I don't know why. Anyway, it turned out they almost couldn't even get the system to work because the system closed down because it's after hours. I don't even know why I'm telling you guys this story. I wasn't planning on it. But anyway, long story short, I got the damn computer and everything seems to be good. Uh, I hated the old one. Something needed to be done. So, um, and I haven't done a lot on it, so I don't know how well it's going to be honest with you. I've done, I'm kind of in the middle of what I would call a soft launch of my sabbatical. So I haven't been doing a lot of emailing or, you know, shop stuff on my website's shop or my website or anything. Um, I guess that's a soft sabbatical that I'm on. So I still have work to do until the final weeks of December of this year. But the month of October is easily, when I looked at the calendar today to kind of look ahead for the month, this is easy breezy babies. <laughs> look, I've never seen, I don't even think I have a, a goddamn doctor appointment, which never happens. For, I, can't, I can't even get through a week without needing a doctor appointment. So I think I probably do have one at the end of the year, and I definitely have a colonoscopy in November. So, I mean, it'll pick right back up in November. But for right now, I was thinking, God, maybe since I was a newborn, I haven't had this easy going of a month. Um, and that might be insensitive. I don't know. I don't know if newborn... It seems to me like it looks on the outside like being a newborn is pretty good. A well-cared-for newborn, that is. Like, you know, you get fed, and then you get to sleep. But... I don't know, something tells me that my October is going to be even better than that because you're adjusting to just existing in the world, which we all know ain't, we, it ain't easy. I ain't easy. You ain't easy. It ain't easy. So um, who knows? Uh, what, what am I even talking about? Um, my computer. Yeah. So I've been relaxed about all business stuff, all studio stuff. I have some more emails to get to in the next couple of days, but I'm taking that slow. In fact, I... <laughs> I, right before I did this, I was just looking at my sent box because I couldn't remember who I had responded to on the list of like five emails I've got to do. And the last seven emails I sent were to Soap Opera Digest magazine. I was laughing so hard because, I mean, I knew I was being relaxed and fun right now, but I didn't know it was quite that relaxed. Like when you go from like working nonstop all throughout the day and night. And then all of a sudden, the only things you've done are seven emails to Soap Opera Digest magazine. <laughs> I, mean, this, I don't know. This is exactly what I need, though. Just fun. I'm having a lot of fun right now. Um, and when have you really ever heard me say that? I probably never. People get the idea that I'm fun. I have a fun attitude sometimes about things, but fun was never really the goal for me, I guess. So it is now. And yeah, another thing uh, like today, I just walked around. I just, I actually, I did that twice. I woke up and I knew, well, let's see what I did. I did a little exercising because my body's feeling better and that was fun. And then that didn't seem like enough. So I thought I'd go out for a little walk. And I walked and I wandered into this hardware store and got a couple of S rings and some chain and a piece of, uh, what's it called? Balsa wood? Is it balsa or balsam? <laughs> I don't know what it's called anymore. Balsa? And then I, or no, it was a dowel rod. That's what it was, a dowel rod. So then I walked and then I went to the coffee shop and then I went to the pharmacy and then I walked home and then, and then I kind of did a few things. I didn't really have, I, again, I'm trying to not make too many plans. And then after lunch and doing a few things, I thought, I want to take another walk. I had to go to the post office again. So I went to the post office, I walked there and then I just kept walking and and as I walked a new way, I stumbled upon a bar that had kombucha on their menu out front. It said, like, kombucha is available now. So I was going to go to the park to make some notes, and then I realized, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to go do the notes in here. There seemed to be a bunch of elderly people at this bar, so I fit right in. Uh, I had a strawberry lemonade kombucha that they brewed there, and... 
it was the best. I mean, I'm telling you, that was the time of my life. So, and then I came back here. Oh, I found out I went viral on Soap Twitter this past weekend. I have a secret account on Twitter that I don't believe I've ever mentioned to you. And it is solely dedicated to um, Young and the Restless tweets and Young and the Restless accounts. And I made a funny observation that apparently got an enormous response on Twitter. So I just found that out. <laughs> And I'm pretty psyched about that. It happened one other time to me uh, since I've been on soap. It, it is regular Twitter, but I call it soap Twitter because I don't look at anything else. Um, I hide from any other news on Twitter other than soap opera stuff. So I was so, and yeah, one other time I went kind of viral. And remember when I got my um, name in the real soap opera digest magazine the print version i just so all these emails i just sent i'm hoping to get in again with some of my observations but i mean this one was a funny uh visual observation that i made and people are loving it and so if you were to ask me i i'm really thinking about this being that i just found out about the art forum review and going viral on soap twitter today <laughs> I just need you guys to know that this is who I am when I say the soap Twitter thing means a lot more to me. And that is no diss to Art Forum, okay? But if you really want to know who I am, this will tell you that that soap Twitter thing and me being in Soap Opera Digest is far more interesting to me than anything Art Forum could ever do or say or be. Uh, is that wrong? I don't know. All right, let me go find a book to read to you guys. Hello, I'm Jim O'Neill, Robin's dad, here at Me Reading Stuff. We are offering free shipping on all books and stickers in the shop. This is an excellent chance to pick up 20 years of drawings, the big and beautiful monograph of Robin's work. Head on over to www.robinoneal.com forward slash shop to pick up something fun for yourself or a friend. Coupon code BOOK. This offer is good through Halloween. Okay, it took me a while to know what I wanted to read, but I've been dealing with all sorts of weird male person issues, and I don't know. It's a long story. Anyway, it reminded me, there's a lot of really good moments of letter writing in Mark Strand poems. So I remembered one called, I think it's, yeah, The Mailman. The Mailman. This is from, I'm reading it from Mark Strand's Selected Poems, which was first published in, this book was published in 1979, and it, and then the version I'm reading is from 2002. It's an Alfred A. Knopf book, and you guys know, for those of you that are new, so I will tell you, Mark Strand is one of my all-time favorite writers, and... I never I never tire of him. In some ways, he he could be one of the five writers that I could dedicate this entire podcast to. If I only read from Mark Strand, I would not be bored. Um, I also keep hearing people keep telling me this, that they don't... I don't know what to think of this. I think it's great and also mortifying on my own part that not everybody... This is... The reading part of my podcast, the reading part of me reading stuff, is not everybody's favorite part. They don't say a diss. They're not like, I hate that part. But they're like, that's not why I tune in. People have even started to suggest that perhaps my po my uh, podcast is in the wrong section of the podcast servers or whatever they're called. Like, should it be in a different category <laughs> other than literature? But my question is, what what category would this podcast ever be in? It certainly can't be in the art section. I think people assume I, if I had a podcast, it would be in the art section, but I don't talk about art enough on here, in my opinion. I think I think I actually refer to like self-improvements more than anything. So, so what if this is actually a self-help podcast? I don't know what it is. I don't think, and I don't say this like, oh, I'm so cool, but I don't think it's categorizable. Cat is that how you say that? I don't know. Anyway, back to the mailman. Forget forget everything I'm saying. All I'm saying is, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm just saying I love Mark Strand, and I'm going to be reading the mailman. All right, here we go. It is midnight. He comes up the walk and knocks at the door. 
I rush to greet him. He stands there weeping, shaking a letter at me. He tells me it contains terrible personal news. He falls to his knees. Forgive me, forgive me, he pleads. I ask him inside. He wipes his eyes. His dark blue suit is like an ink stain on my crimson couch. Helpless, nervous, small, he curls up like a ball and sleeps while I compose more letters to myself in the same vein. You shall live by inflicting pain. You shall forgive. That is the mailman. And I was also going to say, by the way, to anybody in Washington State, I got this book and several books that I've been reading from lately at Easton's Books in Mount Vernon, Washington. They've been a family-run independent bookstore since 1976 in the same location. A beautiful, well-run well organized and and a highly knowledgeable staff, most of which is just one man when I'm in there. And uh, I love that place so much. So if anybody's in the North Sound area ever, I highly recommend Easton's Books in Mount Vernon. And there's a little, there's like tons of little restaurants around there and a bakery and a gluten-free bakery and a little, um, what do you call it? A co-op with just amazing. There's one thing called like, you can get it to go garlic noodles or something. They're so insane. And anyway, the co-op Mount Vernon, love that place too. So I wanted to give a shout out to them. All right. So we read Mark Strand, the mailman. I'll put a link in the description where you can find that book and where you can find Easton's books online. They have some, their poetry room is sort of outrageous. I don't know who it is they're getting these books from, but it, it, it's not just your regular dude. Like whatever's going on in this bookstore, a constant, constant flood of really interesting poetry books, which anybody who follows poetry knows that's not so easy to find. You usually see the same, you know, whoever that Instagram poet is that everybody's freaking out over all the time. We're like, not everybody, but I don't even know who I'm talking about. I think it's a one name person. Anyway. All right. I'm recording over myself. I was trying to explain the difference between a place like Easton's Books, which has a lot of secondhand books and the kind of typical things you see in a poetry section of most bookstores. But I ended up just sounding like a little bitch. You know, I just sounded like a snob or something. And I, and I don't find myself to be that way. I don't think that way at all. I mean, I, but I think I am, I I do sometimes try to find the right words for how I feel about this stuff. I I just am, (laughs) see, I can't do it again. I'm just going to sound like a jerk. And, and I just want to remind people that on this podcast, I don't, I don't do any criticism of any writers and I don't do criticism of bookstores, and I don't do criticism of artists. I do, here, I only praise things. Not not in my own personal life, like I'll talk about all sorts of stuff, but this podcast was really started because I wanted to help sell books for people. I wanted to make sure people were reminded that they should buy books, and that they should read poetry, and that they should support poets and writers, because they're some of the least thought of when it comes to spending your money on things, uh, even more than artists. And so, and I think poets in particular are the most precious commodities we have on planet Earth. So, um, so I'm here to praise things, not to uh, complain. And I always say that because I do read a lot of books that I hate. I read a lot of poems that I hate. I see a lot of books out there in the world that I hate and for good reason. <laughs> but you can talk to, talk to me about that over some kombucha and salad and french fries in person without anything being recorded. But that's not what I do on here because I just find it important. I think the, the more praise out there for the good stuff, the better. So... But I never want, I, I, yeah, it's always important for me to throw in how much I do hate so many things <laughs> because I don't want anybody to get the wrong idea here. I'm not like a fan of everything. So I hope that makes sense. Okay, I, I forgot to tell you guys too that when I was in Texas, I had such a good time with my parents. We did. Damien and I were both uh, stuck around and went to see my parents 
out at their lake house, which is on Possum Kingdom Lake. And uh, w- they were so sweet because, you know, I haven't been eating m- any meat, meat, but I've been e- I'm I'm being mainly vegetarian, although that's a long story because now I'm eating fish again. But Damien is pure vegan, uh, and he grew up being vegan for most of his life, so that's normal for him. But my parents were so sweet and had so many vegan options. My dad made the most amazing chili, which he used a vegan broth. He made his own vegan broth that was crazy good, and I don't know. I can't remember what else. But anyway, my mom, they know that I eat a lot of probiotics. I eat a lot of like sauerkraut and kimchi. My mom found, okay, this is new discovery alert. This is new discovery corner. Uh, squeezable sauerkraut. Have you guys seen this? I have not seen this yet on the West coast, but uh, Texas has it. Now this goes back to Texas grocery stores and grocery store parking lots for me. It does seem like a lot of things get tested out in Texas. I think Maybe, I don't know why, but anyway, yeah, my mom had squeezable sauerkraut. So if you were making a hot dog or we were making vegan hot dogs or vegan sausages, that is, or whatever, you could put that in your, um, you know, green bowl or your rice bowl. I'm just telling you, all of us need to eat more sauerkraut. A show of hands, who likes sauerkraut out in the audience? I think that's about 40%. I would guess 40% of you like sauerkraut. Maybe more. I don't know. I mean, I'm obsessed with it. I am obsessed. Oh my God. Did I also tell you guys that I went to a drag show? Hello. Shout out to Don, my friend Don, who used to live across the street, who broke my heart into a thousand pieces when she moved away. Um, But she moved not far. So anyway, we still get to hang out. And Don came to Houston, by the way. Don came from Washington State to Houston, Texas to come see my show. And we had the most amazing time. So Anyway, or we had a, well, I didn't get to hang out with her all that much. Damien did, but I was busy. So anyway, it was so nice of her. So we went in our little small town area to a drag show. And it was just the other night on a Saturday night, 6 p.m., by the way. Who here has been to a drag show at 6 p.m.? I mean, they happen. I've been to the, you know, I've been to a lot of like Hamburger Mary's daytime uh, drag shows, uh, of course. So you do that. And there, that just happens a lot, I guess, now that I think about it. But being that I lived basically in West Hollywood, in the Beverly Hills area of West Hollywood, and have been to plenty of drag shows in my day, I was so happy to see, I've never, so I've seen like the cream of the crop, I would say, but this was a small town drag show is such a beautiful thing. And I don't mean this in a condescending way, but being that it's not, you know, in the typical ways as good as some that I've seen made it even more beautiful of an experience. And to see a small town embrace this drag show and it was completely sold out. Uh, It was very emotional. The more I thought about it, like I had so much fun, just as you always do at a drag show. But um, yeah, there was just something... I don't know. I have a, you know, maybe I need to process it more, but I'm really grateful that Don told me it was happening because I don't keep up with it. I mean, obviously I just found out there's a bar a couple of blocks down from my street and I didn't even know it that had kombucha. So I don't know anything about anything because I live in my, <laughs> in my house or in my head. I don't know what I live in. I don't need a lot. I mean, the the fact is, is like, I don't need a lot to get entertained. So, and that's a good thing. That's who I am. But occasionally when I do experience the world in the way that I did the drag show and it was at this old theater that had been around since 1921 or something and I don't know it was just it it made me very emotional and to see a community embrace the LGBTQ plus community in an in an in, at an event like this was very special and I could tell everyone knew it was special and um yeah, and there was a representative from the local P flag organization there. So anyway, I guess this is a good chance also for me to remind you guys that anytime you buy a me reading stuff shirt, I don't keep any of the money. I always send all the money directly. It goes directly to the Trevor Project. Um, so if you guys ever, and if you need to know more about the Trevor Project, I'll put a link in the description for you guys to find that. But the Trevor Project is basically a helpline, an organization that helps for free any LGBTQ plus youth in crisis. So I will 
put a link in the description for you to find more about that and to find the me reading stuff uh, t-shirts and sweatshirts, which people love. They always say the same thing, that they're super soft. And like I said, I saw people in Houston wearing them and they looked very cute. This one young woman had uh, the t-shirt on with a very cute skirt, like a high-waisted skirt. And I couldn't believe it. I've never seen that me reading stuff look sh- shirt look better. I have seen it look really good. I've seen a sweatshirt look really good on Cecile McLaurin Salvant. So there's that. My parents always make their me reading stuff merch look great. Uh, And I know you do too out there. So anyway, if you ever buy a me reading stuff t-shirt, all the money goes to the Trevor Project. As always, I will always do that. Uh, And as long as the Trevor Project is in existence. And I'm always looking uh, to support the LGBTQ community in any any way. I've been doing it ever since I was really a kid. So, I mean, not with the Trevor Project, but... I know another thing I meant to talk to you guys about, my worrying. Okay, massive discovery earlier this morning when I was taking a walk. First of all, we all know walks, if you want to make discoveries, take a walk. That's how you make discoveries. We've all known it. We all know it. You know it. I know it. Uh, Thoreau knew it. Who else knows it? My rest book that I keep talking about, that that book knows it. Uh, My mom knows it. And dogs know it. So take a walk when you want to make discoveries. Here was my discovery. I am, it's not my situation, so I'm not going to talk about it, but it is a family member's situation that was brought up to me today, right before I exercised and took a walk. Now, listen up. This is a serious situation and something that I know normally would make me lose my goddamn mind entirely. I would have been crying. I would say five years ago, I would have bawled my eyes out and run to bed and lay in bed all day crying and taking naps and being upset and not being able to function. So I get the news I'm obviously affected, but I go and I exercise in my studio. I have a little area of my studio where I do exercising sometimes. And then I'm thinking about it. I'm like, all right, I'm going to eat some oatmeal. I'm going to still think about this. I'm going to make contact with the person and check on them. And then, you know, get a little more detail. Eat the oatmeal with berries in it and cinnamon. And then I'm going to go take a walk. And as I'm walking, I'm thinking about this, and I, and I suddenly go, oh my God, Robin, you finally did it. Here's what I did. I am finally able to deal with serious situations without just being consumed with worry. I didn't go there. And I didn't even mean to not go there, you guys. It just didn't happen this time. And I and I and I and you might say, well, cool, that's a great one-time experience. Like that might not happen again. That's not true. Cause I you want to know why I know that? Because I know, because I know. I can tell. So I can tell I'm finally different. And that took a good many, at least 10 years, you know, at least 10 serious years of working on this. Cause I am a person consumed with worry most of the time. And when I'm worried, I can't function and I'm worried all the time. And so, I mean, I realize I can kind of function. I've gotten through life, but all I know is that this was a massive, massive achievement for me, you guys. And I am in shock truly in shock that I was able to do this. Um, yeah, I, I I don't know if I'm explaining it well because I can't tell you the situation, but I really was just able to live through my day. And, and, I, and I was tra- kind of wondering, like, why am I so okay right now? And I realized it was because what everybody has tried to tell me for so long about worrying, like worrying isn't gonna solve anything. You can tell somebody who's living in worry that about a billion times and it's not going to matter it, because I heard that a billion times and intellectually, of course, I knew that. I'm not an idiot, but that didn't mean my body and my inner stuff could really embrace that. But suddenly today, that little piece of knowledge 
is finally alive and well within me where I'm like, that is true. Worrying about it's not going to do anything. Nothing at all. I cannot do anything about it. Nor can I do anything about most things. So I just ha- I have to say of all of the little, I don't know, self-help f- things I've attempted or I guess self-improvements is what I want to say. Of all of the self-improvements I have tried so hard to enact and successfully done, um, nothing has felt bigger than this one. It was almost like I had to wonder, am I on drugs or something? Like, wh- like how did this just all of a sudden happen? And by the way, to all of you out there who just don't function like that, who just aren't warriors, God bless you. God bless the parents who raised you. God bless everybody. Because I don't understand. I, y- sometimes it's just chemical. Like your body just doesn't do that. And those of us who do, it is also chemical. But you can adjust your chemicals sometimes. And I think I finally adjusted my chemicals. <laughs> my chemicals have been <laughs> raging towards worry since I was so little. I mean... The amount of shit I worry about, you guys. I'm trying to ex- explain. Like, you know, I mean, even little things like going to a bar and ordering a drink. I'm just like, oh, my God. What if I look like I'm a jerk? What if I look like I'm ignoring someone? What if I look like I'm trying to get in the way? What if I... Blah, blah. I mean, still, that's happening. But I don't know. It didn't happen when I went to get my kombucha today. I was very confident. I walked up. There are other people in there. Granted, they were all elderly. So I, I didn't feel judged by them. I mean, I guess elderly people still judge people. But... Do you guys feel that way? It's like when I'm around young people, I feel really like, oh, God. But then again, young people are not as judgmental these days as they were when I was young. When I was young, uh, it was horrible. But nowadays, people accept people a little bit more. I don't know. Do they, though? Really? I mean, they do and they don't. It's both, it's both ultra. People are very inclusive now. But also, they, people can also be super hateful now, so I don't know. (laughs) This is a weird time to be alive, isn't it? Do you guys agree? Okay. You guys, that's it. I've talked your ear off enough. I'm sorry I missed some weeks. I did look. I was like, no, I've been home long enough to have recorded this. But guess what? I just didn't feel like it. And that's enough of a reason. But I do miss you guys when I don't talk to you. I'm wondering how you guys are all doing. Thank you for anybody who has reached out to me, said nice things. I always get the messages. I almost always respond. Sometimes it takes eight months. Sometimes it takes eight minutes. It just kind of depends. You guys are good about liking me for who I am and the way I am. And I do the same for you, not to sound too much (laughs) like Mr. Rogers. I am a little like Mr. Rogers, though. And I am a little bit like Delilah. Who out there remembers Delilah? Am I not a little bit like Delilah? I'm like the modern day Delilah, and we all know it. And this this podcast should be a internationally syndicated radio show, if you ask me. So you guys out there in power, make that shit happen. Thank you, guys. Take good care of yourselves. Take good care of your pets. Take a walk. Eat some cauliflower. Make breakfast. Do all of it. Do it all. Whatever it is you want to do, do it. And if you happen to be a bigot, a homophobe, a racist, or a pedophile, or a rapist, get the fuck out of this podcast. You're not welcome here. Everybody else is, though. Bye-bye.